Hey, this is Wit with another Slater session. Uh, it's been a while. I'm glad to be back talking about how we can help you use Slater to supercharge your Webflow projects. Today, we're going to be covering the scripts that connect Slater to your project. Now, whether you're using Slater as a native Webflow app via the designer or using it via our web app, how we connect scripts is one of the most fundamental aspects of using Slater. Depending on your comfort level with JavaScript, you got a couple of options, and it's important to understand the differences between the two. So, without further ado, let's go. All right, the first uh, approach we're going to be looking at is using what we call our smart script. And essentially what that does is it gives you kind of a set it and forget it setup connection uh, from Slater to Webflow. And we'll walk you through kind of how we set the projects up and then how we make the connections and what the considerations are of each of those. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is create a new project and you'll see I'm prompted uh, to connect to Webflow. The benefit of connecting to Webflow is basically we can read the uh, structure of the existing site, present you with options for mapping scripts to those corresponding pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna have me authenticate. And I've set up a smart script demo here. I'll go ahead and authorize that. And that will take us back into Slater um, as soon as it's been authorized. And we can just pull that from the, di uh, from the drop down now. And I'm just going to give this a title of Slater demo. All right, we create that project. Now, what we're going to do inside of this project is go through, we're going to make our first new file. And you'll see when you open the new file, you've got, uh, now that you've connected the project, you've got some options as far as kind of how these things get mapped. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is just create kind of a global catch-all for our script. So I'll make a global file, and we will click global to map that to all the pages in the site. And we'll go ahead and save that, and we'll do a simple uh, console log to say global script. And we'll save that. And then the next thing I'm going to do, just so we can kind of see some differentiation, uh, is we'll make a home script. And we'll call that home. Map that to there. And we will add console log home script, just to be consistent. And we'll save that. And then let's go ahead and do one more, just so we can see the difference between these. And I'll map this to our about page. We'll say about, save that file, and we'll console log about script. All right, great. So now what we're going to do, we go over into our connections panel here on the left. And you'll see a few options here. So the first that you'll see is smart script. And so we're just going to copy that. So we'll grab that, take that over into Webflow. Uh, and I'm going to go into my custom code. Um, and I generally will put this before the close body tag. So just paste that in there. And we can go ahead and publish this. And what we're going to be looking for is just something, basically our console logs, to show that we've got the site connected. So I'm going to open this up. We've got just a demo template site from the Webflow templates. And I'm going to add this here. So you'll see uh, that the Slater demo has loaded in our console. And you'll also see that we've loaded our home script and our global script. So now if I go to the about page, the way that we've mapped it, we have global maps to global, home is mapped to the home page, about is mapped to the about page. So when I go to the about page, what I should see is global script and about script. And that's pretty much it. So there's a couple of things um, with this to kind of keep in mind. Um, it does, you know, you, you kind of have to set up the connections in here uh, as you set your pages up. One other thing to make note of is the way that we handle routing these scripts is we listen for DO, uh, DOM content load event. And so if I'm in here and I've pulled a script either from the chatbot or from Stack Overflow or from somewhere else that includes DOM content, over, uh, content load, um, I'll actually get a warning. Um, and let's see if I can trigger this. Yeah, so just even by having that present, we do give you a little notification that um, we handle DOM content loaded. 
the the rub there is that you know we need that for routing but it also is only an event that fires once so since it's firing at the top level to route the scripts uh it does not fire within here so if you ever run into something with a script that's not running as you would expect it to run uh, just keep an eye out for that and that's one consideration now there may be a situation where you actually do need to use a script that is unmapped um, and you want to basically just, you know, instead of having it, um, you know, global, you want to have it in one particular page, but not necessarily served in the same way. And we can actually use our simple scripts, which we'll get into a little bit more down the line. But if you grab your simple script, uh, I could grab my, let's say I make a new page. I'm going to say this is going to be a simple, <laughs> simple, and we're not going to map it to anything. And so that's going to kind of keep it out of the mix. Um, and what we can do with this is manually place these uh, in our project. So I could say simple script and we'll save that staging production and then grab our simple script tag here and we can copy that. And what you can do with this is if you want to, you can keep this kind of out of your, um, you can put this at a page level. So if I go into the designer and I have a page that I want to apply this to, in this case, I'm going to manually place this because it's not being routed. Um, so if I go into, let's say we go into the style guide page and I just want to add this in before the close body tag. Uh, it is going to map that uh, independent of the other scripts. And that's pretty much it for the smart script. Again, when you're using the smart script, a lot of times, you know, depending on your comfort level of JavaScript, you won't necessarily need to use a simple script, uh, but it's there if you do need it. Okay, so the second way we can connect our project to uh, Webflow is by using what we call simple script. We looked at it a little bit in the last segment, um, but you know, you might wonder why would you want to set something up like that. Uh, generally, it just gives you a little bit more control. It's a much more manual process. Like we're basically um, going page by page to uh, connect the scripts. Uh, it could be useful if you have a repository of scripts that you want to reuse across sites, uh, things like that. Um, but anyway, we'll show you kind of how to set it up real quick and hopefully that'll make it make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new project and I'm not going to connect to Webflow in this case. You can connect to Webflow and still use the simple script, but in this case, I'm just going to say, I'm going to go ahead and continue without connecting. I'm going to make my project simple script demo. We'll create that. And once we go in here, you'll see that when I go into, you know, again, offers you to connect. You don't have to connect right out of the gate. You can set up your connection after. But in my case, for this one, we're just going to go ahead and set it up without connecting. So uh, first, I'm going to basically just do the same things that I did last time. I'm going to go ahead and create. You'll notice that we don't have the, the structure of the site to map things to. All good. I'll show you kind of how we map these things manually. Uh, and we'll go ahead and set up our global script here. And we'll do the same thing we did last time. Just going to do a simple console log for global script. If I can spell. And we'll save that. And then we'll go ahead and do a home script. And we'll console log home script save that and then we're also going to create an about script and we'll console log about oops about script okay so now once we got that we're going to do a little bit different as far as we connect so the first thing i'm going to do is actually go over in here and i've got a separate project that's set up for this particular one Okay, so I've got my simple script demo here in Webflow. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my global script. So come over here. Uh, you'll notice that really, if we're not connected to Webflow, what you see is your simple script because it doesn't have the page structure to route things against, which is all good. 
So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grab uh, the global script. You can grab it, which is, there's a couple of different ways we present it. So you can grab it as is, which is essentially handles DOM content load. It maps your script to your Webflow IO domain or to your production domain if it's a .com. Um, in this case, what I'm actually gonna do is twirl this down and you'll see you've got a staging script and a production script here. Now the staging script, the advantages of uh, in the router, so if we're using uh, smart script or if we're using the kind of top level uh, simple script, is it will um, only serve to the webflow.io domain uh, and the production script would only serve to the .com. In my case for this one, I'm just gonna grab the production script. Um, the main difference between the two, staging script runs a little bit faster. Production script is more hardened, so we, um, you know, we make sure that the production scripts live on an S3 bucket and they're always available, you know, really, really reliable. So I'm gonna grab that, copy this, and I'm gonna come over to Slater, or sorry, to Webflow. And in my custom code here, for my global code, I'm gonna just add this, which is our uh, simple script. You'll see it doesn't have any of the JavaScript as far as routing goes. And you can do things like add async. Uh, you can add defer to this if you want to change the load order, things like that. It's a little more advanced, but it does give you a lot more control of kind of how the things are loaded and the order they're loaded in. So I'm going to go ahead and save this here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, publish this site. And then I'm going to go into the designer now that that's published. And again, what I'm going to be man doing is manually placing these scripts on the pages that they correspond to. Global script is already in site settings at the top level, so that's going to work uh, across all the pages. And for this, I'll grab the production script for home, and I'm going to drop that in to the custom code on the home page right before the close body tag. And then I'm also going to go into the about page and grab the about script, and again, grabbing production script. And I am going to place that in the same way. Okay, so now that that's set up, when I publish, what we should see in our console logs will be global script and home script running on the home page. Now you see that it doesn't have the Slater file loaded console log, which is actually built into the uh, smart script and to the script that handles routing. Um, but again, for my purposes this time, I just wanted to do it um, straight up, just regular old script tag. If I go to the about page, you'll see that I have my about script and my global script. That's pretty much it. Again, you know, the reasons why you would want to use a uh, simple script uh, on its own is if you wanted to just manually set up the routing of the pages uh, to not have to use the router, which uh, does wait on the DOM content loaded event. It gives you access to the DOM content loaded event within the script uh, if you won't need that for any purposes. Um, and then another reason would be just because you're hosting scripts that you're going to use across multiple sites. Like if you have like a, a script bank of things like GSAP animations or you know, things that are kind of um, site agnostic, that's a good good way to kind of handle that. So you can just stub those in. So that's it. Our two connection options for setting Slater up and getting it up and running across your projects. Uh, as always, if there are any questions, you can hit us up on Twitter or join the Slater Slack channel, and we will see you out there.